All right, so again, for quiz number 17, we will be dealing with a total of seven different shapes, okay? Uh, rectangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, triangles, those are area problems, okay? And then we're gonna move into some volume uh, problems, which are spheres, cylinders, and prisms, okay? Uh, all of which have their own formulas. So uh, let me, I guess in the very beginning, we could do it this way. Let me write down the things you need to know, okay? So areas. So um, for a rectangle, the area is just base times height. I'm not going to draw the picture with it. We'll do that later. For now, I just want to, I want you guys to be able to look at the notes later on and just be able to find all these things all at one place. So uh, you have your rectangle, which is base times height. You have a parallelogram. Which is also area equal to base times height. You have a triangle. Which is what you get when you cut a rectangle in half. So the area is one half the base times the height. And then you have your uh, trapezoid. And that's the one that's kind of like the, the tough equation because it has some more stuff to it. <clears throat> area is equal to one half the height times the sum of the bases. Okay, so those are the four areas that you need to know. Okay, uh, in order to do this quiz, you need to make sure you know all four of those because I do know that all four of those shapes will show up on your quiz. I think there's 14 questions. Okay, so I think they've allowed like two of each. Uh, or, or very close to that, okay? So two triangles, two parallelograms, two rectangles, two trapezoids. Uh, so that gives you eight. Now we need six more. And there are three more shapes, so, so it would be two of those each. That gives you 14. So make sure you understand how to use the formulas once we get to it. And then we're also going to write down the volumes, okay? So there are three volumes that you guys need to know. So the volume of a sphere... So volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so 4 thirds pi r cubed. The volume of a prism. Remember, normally they call them rectangular prisms, but they can be triangular prisms. They can be uh, cubes, which are square prisms, okay? Um, so it just depends on what's given to you. But the volume of a prism for us, uh, the, the general, or not, let's not say general, the more common way they write length times width times height. But remember, um, I want you guys to try to focus on the base area times the height. Remember, base area is length times width, right? But the reason why I prefer you guys use base area is because if the base is a rectangle, you use length times width. If the base is a triangle, you use half base times height. If the base is a parallelogram, then you use base times height. Like it depends. If the base is a trapezoid, you use the trapezoid area, right? So using B sub A gives you more freedom to say, okay, what is my base to this shape, okay? And then we have the, um, the uh, cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And remember, you can write it as base area times height if you want to, because the base of a cylinder is a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So what I can do, just to kind of emphasize this, I can highlight length times width and base area just so you can see how these are related. And the pi r squared is your base area for a cylinder because the cylinder has a circular base, okay? So 
just so you can see like it's the same thing they just write it differently right but that's completely up to you if you want to uh, use the base area times height or if you just want to use the other formula either one will work just fine okay so no one is better than the other sometimes one might be a little bit more practical but but still you'll get the same answer it doesn't matter which way to do it so uh, those are all seven formulas you need to know okay uh, I'll just kind of zoom out so you can see them all uh, rectangle parallelogram triangle and trapezoid all for area and then sphere prism cylinder those are all for volume now just a real quick uh, note on this for areas remember the units are squared okay uh, in other words like square feet square inches square centimeters etc okay so whenever you're dealing with areas if they ever ask you like what are the units for it they're always squared okay for the volumes your units are cubed so I'm gonna put right here units are cubed so cubic feet cubic centimeters cubic meters etc all right so your units are going to be a power of three for volume uh, it's a power of two for area remember the reason why it's a power of two for areas is because if you look at all your area formulas uh, you have two dimensional stuff base times height right so like feet times feet that's what you're doing so feet squared whereas for volumes uh, if i show you like let's say the prism length times width times height that's three things so it's feet times feet times feet that's feet cubed right so it's three dimensional volume is three dimensional so the power for its unit is three right area is two dimensional it's flat right like a table so there's only two ways it goes up down left right so since it's only two dimensional the power has to be two okay so it does depend on the dimensions of the object okay that's why distance is only one dimensional you're either going left to right or you're going up or down right so uh, you're not doing both at the same time uh, uh, well without using a distance formula but in most cases you're just doing one way to the other so it's just like feet centimeters meters that type of thing so distance is just a, a power of one um, okay so let's get to some examples um, that way we can make sure that you guys understand how to do this I'm only going to do one of each and then if you guys want to see more of one then tell me okay um, and uh, when you're when you're uh, doing these things remember you're gonna have probably have to use a calculator for a lot of these problems so when you come in um, just let me know by the way I did get 10 new calculators that they gave me so in case we always kind of ran out if we did everybody should be able to get one now um, so here we go so we'll start off with just volume problems so let me let me actually just write find the area sorry area problems find the area we're starting off with area problems so uh, we'll start with example one here so let's just start off with the basic shape of a rectangle Usually they'll draw the 90 degree angles there just so you know that this is a rectangle. And let's say that this is uh, 3 inches and 4 inches. Again, they will give you problems like this on your quiz. This isn't like, oh, this is too easy. It's never show up. I, I did see rectangle problems on your quiz unless they decided to change it last minute. But I did see some. Um, I, I say they because I can't edit it. I'm not in charge of that quiz. So... Um, if they change stuff around that's that's what they do so I'm hoping they'll they keep these but remember to find the area of a rectangle all you're gonna do is multiply the base times the height okay uh, my base is what three and my height four so three times four is twelve now my units should be squared right so this is gonna be inches squared and I'm done okay 
I, like I said, I really think that this quiz should be relatively simple. Just practice so that you know how to use the formula. But it's just use a formula, plug in your numbers, and you should be good. Okay? There should be no reason why you guys can't all get 100% on this stuff. Uh, may, well, there is a reason. Maybe you miscalculate something. But uh, in most cases, if everything goes okay with the calculator, you should be good. All right? So that's a rectangle. Let's do a parallelogram. Example number two. Okay, now for the parallelogram, normally they're going to give you, let's say, two feet here, and then you're going to see the height somewhere else. Okay, so let's say this is five feet. Or let me change it back to blue, but at least the drawing is going to be in red here, but five feet. So the area to a parallelogram is still base times height. Okay, so the area of that parallelogram still base times height. What is my base? Two, and my height? Five. So I'm just going to put two times five, which is ten. And my unit should be squared, so square feet. Remember what I told you guys, on your quiz, if you have to fill in the number, don't put feet squared, just put 10, okay? Don't worry about the units on the fill in the blank ones, just put the number that you get, all right? So the reason why I'm not doing a whole bunch of these is because, you know, if you can do one, you can do the other, they're, they're not too bad, okay? So I don't need to do three of these. I think for the most part, multiplying two numbers you guys are okay with, right? Um, it's some of the other ones that might be a little tougher. So example number three, let's go to triangles. So you could get two types of triangles. Let me put uh, example 3A and example 3B, all right? I want to draw the triangles two different ways. Um, you might see it maybe like this. Or maybe like that. Okay. Now, usually, when it looks like something like A, they'll give you a value. Okay, so let's say this is uh, four centimeters, and they might say this is like uh, seven centimeters for that one. And then for part B, they'll also drop a value. Three inches, we'll say this is like six inches. So for this, I am going to do two just because I want you to see that they could give you an acute triangle, which would be uh, like part A, um, or it could be an obtuse triangle like part B. If it's obtuse, usually the height is found on the outside of the shape, okay? Uh, not always, but usually, uh, at least the, up to mat three. Um, and acute ones are always found within, or maybe it's one of the sides, depending on what it looks like. Um, so, formula. Area is equal to one half base times height. Okay, so one half. What's my base for the first one? Seven, and my height? Four, right? So seven times four is 28. So let me write one half of 28, and half of 28 is 14. So this is going to be centimeters squared. So do me a favor, guys. Do part B. It's really not that different. Sure, it looks different, but it's not that different. Try doing B. I'm going to give you about a minute or so to get it done. I heard someone say it. Someone said it over here. What is the answer you got? I heard one of you guys say it. 
Who said it? You said the right thing. Nine. Nine, yes. <laughs> yeah, it is nine inches squared, right? Um, so area is equal to one half base times height. So area is one half. The base is a three and the height is a six. So that's 18 when you multiply that out. And half of 18 is nine. And the unit should be squared. So there you go, nine inches squared. Okay, so those are triangles. All right, so we've done rectangles, parallelograms, triangles. The last area type of problem that you're going to see is trapezoids. Okay, so uh, let me show you a trapezoid prop. So, oops, example number four. And let me draw it like... We'll draw it like this. Now they will usually give you a height unless the height is one of the sides. It just depends if, if they draw it with a 90 degree angle on the left side or right side. Uh, for us, we're not going to do that. So the height is going to be given inside. Let's call this two centimeters. And then uh, we'll go with the bases of three centimeters and what is that, about seven centimeters maybe, if we try to keep it uh, very close. So there's my trapezoid. So this is the more complicated of all the area ones, but they're not terribly difficult. You just got to know, okay, your bases are always parallel to each other. So like these right here, granted my picture doesn't really look like they're parallel. But those are the ones that are parallel to each other. So those are your bases, okay? Um, and then your height, you'll find it inside. So area is equal to one half the height times the sum of the bases. So just plug in your information, right? What is my height value? That's a two. And then one of my bases we can go top that's going to be three and the other one is seven now half of two that's going to cancel right half of two that's pretty much gone so area is just equal to 10 centimeters squared okay so there you go Again, you're going to have probably about eight problems that are going to look like this. Okay, eight problems that are going to look like that. So um, two of each, most likely. Two trapezoids, two triangles, two parallelograms, two rectangles. All right? I, I'm hoping that they're not too difficult for you guys. Like I said, you can see the work doesn't take that long. I mean, you... You, the examples I'm giving you, you don't even need a calculator, but the ones on the test, maybe they'll give you some problems that have decimals on sides and stuff like that. So you might want to just have your calculator handy so you can punch those things in, right? So next section, volumes. Okay, so find the volumes. So we're going to do a, a sphere, uh, a prism, and a cylinder, okay? A sphere, a prism, and a cylinder. So this will be example number five. So we'll do the best and try to draw a sphere. Oops. We'll make this problem one of the quote unquote hard ones, right? So they usually will draw an arrow and tell you that that's, let's say, 10 inches.
Okay. Now remember the volume formula is 4 thirds pi r cubed. All you need to know, bless you, is your radius, right? So 10 is my radius, right? No. no. What's 10? Diameter. Diameter. So what's my radius? Five. I got to cut it in half. How do I know it's my diameter? Because the line that I drew in red goes all the way across. That means the 10 is referring to the full line all the way across the middle. If I only drew half of that red line, then the 10 would be the radius, okay? But since I drew all of it, then I gotta cut it in half. So I'm just gonna put uh, D is 10 inches, so R is five inches. So that's my radius. So I'm gonna plug that into my formula. V equal to four thirds pi five to the third. Okay. Um, now, if they ask you to leave your answer in terms of pi, then all you do is you multiply the numbers only and leave the pi on the outside. If they don't say that, then multiply everything up. So volume is 4 thirds pi and uh, 5 to the third, that's 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. And 125 times 4, that's 500 over three pi. This will be inches cubed. Now I'm gonna get my calculator here just because uh, I wanna give you guys the decimal uh, answer for that. And I also wanna make sure that I did that correctly. Yeah, so it is 500. So 500 times pi divided by three is 523.58 uh, cubic inches. Let's just say they want you to round it to there. So for you guys, um, I'm gonna put a box around both of these, depending on what they want from you. If they want it in terms of pi, then you use the top one. Okay, and by the way, maybe on the test, maybe they divide 500 over three, right? Uh, they, they might do that. They might write um, 166.6 pi, okay? They might do that, but they're gonna have a pi there, or they want you to work it all out, so it'd be 523.58, okay? So both answers are correct. It just depends how they want you guys to do it. So that's a sphere, okay? And like I said, I did the hard sphere problem. So if you thought that was easy, then the radius ones are even easier because you don't have to worry about division, right? The dividing of the diameter. You just get the number they give you and you, and you go on with the problem. So this, I gave you one of the hard sphere problems. Um, example six, we're almost done here. Unless you guys want a couple extra. Uh, let's go to a prism. Um, I don't know, what kind of shape should we draw? If these are a little tough for you to draw, just write down the information at least. Remember, on your quiz, there will be one there for you, okay? You won't have to worry about drawing it yourself. Let me label a couple sides here. give you a little bit of time just to try to draw it if you want to draw it. Yeah.
It'll be on the notes. So that's kind of the nice thing. It'll be there for you. Now remember, there are two formulas for this, okay? Uh, but uh, they're both the same. You can either use uh, volume equals length times width times height, or you could use um, uh, the volume is equal to base area times height, okay? Uh, it's completely up to you. Um, I usually like doing the base area one, but if you don't like to do that one, that's okay. We'll do it both ways just to show you, okay? Volume is equal to length times width times height. We'll start with that one. What's my length? Is it two or is it three? Three? What if I say it's two? Does it matter? No, because I'm multiplying. As long as I use both numbers, right? So we'll go with three since you said three. What's my width? Two. What's my height? Five. Does it matter if I called five my length and two my width and three my height? No, because I'm multiplying. It doesn't matter. The only time it matters is when you divide or subtract. If you add or multiply, the order does not matter. Okay? So, this is going to be 6 times 5 or 30 cubic centimeters. Okay? Now, if I do it the other way, Volume is equal to base area times height. Like I said, I like doing it this way because it becomes a little more dynamic in terms of formulas. I would have to choose a base. So I'm going to choose that as my base right there. Okay, the bottom. So what's the area of this base, the base area? That would be 2 by 3, right? That's 6. The area of that little yellow colored in area, uh, space right there is 2 times 3. Okay? So when I put that into my formula, V is equal to 6. And then my height is 5. So my volume is 30. It doesn't matter. You do it however you like. It's up to you. Okay? Again, I prefer base area times height because I know the benefits of it being more dynamic. I can, I can apply it to multiple shapes. But some people are like, yeah, I don't want to think about that. Just give me the actual equation that works. Length times width times height. Okay, so there you go. There's a prism. We've got one more shape. Okay, cylinders. But notice, it works either way. All right, it works either way. And then if you guys have uh, anything you'd like to see more of, you can ask me. But we at least get uh, the main seven shapes done. So you can see how they look. So I'm going to make this one uh, standing up, okay? That way we don't have to redraw it. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'll give you the actual radius. Uh, I'm also not going to put any units on this one. I'm not going to call it meters, centimeters, inches. No, I'm just going to leave it as numbers. So at the end, when we're done with the problem and we have a numerical answer, your units, you actually say units, UN, units cubed, okay? So if they don't have any units, you just call it units cubed. So here we go. Formula for a cylinder. Pi R squared H. Again, this is a good problem that they could ask you, like, just write us the answer in terms of pi. Or maybe they say, no, give it to us in terms of all uh, decimal values and stuff. So just depends. So my radius uh, is what? Oh, yeah, it's going to be 4, right? I don't have to divide it by 2 because of the fact that it isn't the diameter. Okay, so 4 squared and then my height is 6. So volume is equal to pi 16 times 6. Um, just to kind of get this thing here, 16 times 6, make sure that's 96. So volume is equal to 96 pi units cubed. Now again, if they want you to leave it in terms of pi, that's what you do. 
if they want you to go all the way through and multiply times pi, then your answer is 301.58 units cubed. And that's it.